here again. Uh, uh, this is the Georgian set, uh, focusing on the music of the Georgians from 1923. And uh, this was one of my favorite groups uh, when I was growing up listening to this music. I was really into the Paul Specht Orchestra, and this was one of the bands within a band uh, that was playing and recording at the time. Uh, another one that was the competing band uh, was the Virginians who were recording for the Victor label. And so Paul Specht for the Columbia label wanted to have something similar. And so Frank Gorente formed this group uh, that was the band within a band. So you had Russell Depp, Chauncey Morehouse, uh, Arthur Shutt on piano, uh, Russ Morgan on trombone, some great musicians. And so uh, we're going to be playing the music for you. Toward the end of our set, we're going to augment the group so we can do just two extra songs here. Uh, that are going to be a lot of fun to play. But the Georgians had a lot of interesting sounds that were coming out of their group, novelty-type uh, instruments. On this first one, uh, you're going to hear a Richard on the bass clarinet doing a solo, uh, which is usually unheard of. So, that's right. <laughs> on that first, oh no, I'm sorry, uh, the uh, one's coming up. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just making sure you're awake this morning. <laughs> So uh, the first one, we're going to start uh, with one of the first ones recorded by the Georgians under their name. They actually did another one called Hot Lips uh, under Spex Society Serenaders, which we're going to play later for you. But this is the start of the Georgians, 1922. I wish I could shimmy like my sister Kate. My sister Kate. Um, I'm trying to uh, create this as authentically to the original recordings, and so there's 
very sparse drums. You kind of hear these little cymbal crashes and some woodblock work that Chauncey Morehouse was doing. Uh, in an article and uh, interview done with Chauncey Morehouse, he was talking about his recording days with the Georgians and with Paul Specht. And they asked him, well, which was the best band that you ever played for? And mind you, he played uh, for the Gold Cat Band with Bing Crosby and, and you name it, he was with all the big stars. But he said the Paul Specht Band was the one group he loved playing with the most. And they asked why, and he said, I was able to do whatever I wanted percussion-wise. It wasn't written down, I could just throw in and play the way I was feeling. He goes, and it wasn't technically arranged for me, to, uh, for my drum parts. And they said, oh, so you like that? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, I also like that, that Paul Speck, when we'd be playing at the Alamac, he would get in front of the band and kick off the band at the start of the evening, and then he'd leave the stage for the rest of the night. And as the band was halfway through their last song, he'd come in through a door with his violin and wave and say, it's great seeing everybody tonight, so we'll see you next week, or whatever. And so the band liked it because Frank Lorente would be in charge of calling the songs at the Alamac. So the musicians were left on the stage. And mind you, these weren't guys in their 50s and 60s. These were 18-year-old kids being left in charge of themselves on stage. And one thing they would do for fun, uh, the, yeah, oh boy, uh, the Alamac is at 71st and Broadway in Manhattan. And I believe it's about 25, 30 stories high the building is where they play at. They played in a place called the Congo Room. And for fun, on the set breaks, they would go outside and walk the ledge of the building for fun. Mind you, they're 18. <laughs> they're having a lot of fun. Uh, and so they would do that each and every night. And I have a photograph of the three of the members of the Georgians standing by the ledge in their fedoras and coats. Yeah, we, we can do it afterwards. So I'll we'll walk the ledge of the village afterwards. So, uh, But this next song uh, is a, a transcription that uh, Vince Giordano had done. And uh, he found out that I was doing a, a Georgian set. And he goes, I didn't use this one, so you're more than... Uh, happy to use it, so I thank Vince for, for the transcription here. Uh, this is one, a Fred Fisher tune. Uh, this is on the same recording session as I Wish I Could Shimmy Like My Sister Kate. This is entitled Chicago. Thank you. 
that uh, before I go too far, the instrument I'm playing is an Allen's Duck Quack. Yeah. And uh, this has been a long time sound effect people have been trying to figure out on these recordings. Was it a Reeser phone? Was it a Duck Quack? And there's a company in Seattle that um, buys up old traps and 1920s instruments and resells them. And I saw this on their website, and so I sent the sound clip to the guy and I said, hey, do you have one of these that match that sound? So he tried this one, and he goes, this is the closest one to that actual sound, and, and it literally is. And so um, it's, it's safe to say I think Chauncey was doing the, the duck quack on that one. And it's literally just uh, making the duck sounds, and you can change the pitch, but the thing is there's a wood reed inside, and so these do crack every so often. And so um, this came through the, uh, the TSA with me on the way here. So of course I got stopped because they <laughs> saw it, and they wanted to start inspecting it, and like, oh, there goes my reed now. And, but they, they let it go, so said, it, it's a duck call. And they just had like a blank look on their face. <laughs> okay. I said, I'm a musician, and then they saw all my old drums, they're like, oh, okay, you can go. But I thought I was going to have to take it apart, which I've had to do before with, with my snare drums. I've actually had to take them apart, even though it's a see-through head on the bottom. They're like, we need to take it apart. We think that you did like a picture, and you taped it to the inside of your head. I'm like, oh, okay. So, the joys of traveling, but it's fun. Um, all right, we're going to slow it down here. Uh, but first, let me introduce the, the musicians here. Um, over on piano, he's been uh, tearing up the piano. Um, and from New Orleans, we have David Bodinghouse. One of our reed players. Uh, we have Richard Exall. And I'm, I'm actually proud to say this. I'm, I think the first one that likes to say it. Uh, recently located to England permanently now. We have Michael McQuaid. First time at this festival, and we've done a lot of work back home together. He's a fantastic trumpet and cornet player from New York. We have Mike Davis. <laughs> and on trombone, you'd know him, of course. We have Christopher Compton on trombone. <laughs> and back on banjo, I'm going to let him uh, talk about uh, his banjo after I introduce him here, but uh, we have none other than the great Martin Wheatley on banjo. <laughs> who is the original banjo player for the Georgian, so I'm going to let him tell the story here. I was just, uh, just uh, having a quick look this morning um, to see what sort of instrument Russell Depp played, and uh, sure enough, it was, it was actually one of these very models, Wayman Orchestra model, and there's a picture of him to prove it, and a letter um, in January 1923, uh, to the Wayman Company of Philadelphia, praising them on their new instrument. So, uh, Russell Depp and I think alike about banjos. Uh, you could say I was his Depp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to slow down a little bit for you. This is one um, roughly from about, I think, uh, January of 23, so it's about the same time that uh, Russell Depp wrote that letter. This is entitled Aggravating Papa. <laughs> <laughs> 